Recently, I got a lot of flack from a Jehovah's Witness lawyer on TikTok about me stating that the Jehovah's Witness belief that they will never die is false, and I was told that I was creating sensation. Well, in this episode, I unpack the belief with proof from their very own publications that the doctrine is actually true. Stay tuned. Back into history with regards to this organization. The failure of the Watchtower's 1914 forecast for the system's de- demise, as well as Russell's death in 1916, left his adherents in turmoil. Rutherford was elected president of the Watchtower after some legal wrangling. Rutherford deserves credit for his capacity to reconstruct the religion. The world has ended. Millions now living may never die he declared in public discourse in February 1918, reawakening the remaining followers' sense of urgency. That title was modified to The World Has Ended, Millions Now Living Will Never Die in March 1918, which was a more appealing title. In 1920, this message was released in the booklet Millions Now Living Will Never Die. This was further expounded in 1921 in Rutherford's first book, the harp of God, which carried on the cover the inscription, proof conclusive that millions now living will never die. In 1924, the children's book, The Way to Paradise, made a number of outlandish predictions for 1925 and life in the new system. The proclaimer's book relates, What an exciting message they proclaimed. Millions now living will never die. Brother Rutherford had given a discourse on the subject in 1918, It was also the title of a 128-page booklet published in 1920. From 1920 through 1925, that same subject was featured again and again around the world in public meetings, in all areas where speakers were available, and in upwards of 30 languages. Uh, This this is actually from the Jehovah's Witnesses, Proclaimers of God's Kingdom, page 425. Now, reading the Proclaimers book's scant mention of this topic, one may conclude that 1925 had little significance in the history of Jehovah's Witnesses. Nonetheless, this was Rutherford's defining prophecy. Most Jehovah's Witnesses are unaware that this was the emphasis of Watchtower preaching work between 1918 and 1925. Millions now living will never die introduced Rutherford's forecast that the earthly resurrection will begin in 1925, starting with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the expectations for 1925 included the following, the end of Christendom, the return of earth to a paradise, the resurrection of the dead onto earth, the Zionist teaching of the re-establishment of Palestine. The following quotes outline these expectations, and I quote from the millions now living will never die, uh, page 88, where it says, what then should we expect to take place? The chief thing to be restored is the human race to life. And since other scriptures definitely fix the fact that there will be a resurrection of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and other faithful ones of old and that these will have the first favor, we may expect 1925 to witness the return of these faithful men of Israel from the condition of death, being resurrected and fully restored to perfect humanity and made the visible legal representatives of the new order of things on earth. And then it goes on to say, as we have here to forestated, the great Jubilee cycle is due to begin in 1925. At that time, the earthly phase of the kingdom shall be recognized. Now, the way to paradise, 1920, which is also a 1925 book, page 224 goes on to state, the year 1926 would therefore begin about October 1st, 1925. We should therefore... Expect shortly after 1925 to see the awakening of Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Melchizedek, Job, Moses, Samuel, David, Isaac, uh, Isaiah, sorry, uh, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, John the Baptist, and others mentioned in the 11th chapter of Hebrews. 
No doubt many boys and girls who read this book will live to see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Daniel and other and those other men of old come forth in the glory of their better resurrection, perfect in mind and body. It will not take long for Christ to appoint them to their posts of honor and authority as his earthly representatives. The world and all the present conveniences will seem strange to them at first, but they will soon become accustomed to the new methods. They may have some amusing experiences at first, for they never saw telephones, radios, automobiles, electric lights, aeroplanes, steam engines, and many other things so familiar to us. Look at this quote from the Bulletin of October 1920, uh, where it inc included an outline on how to introduce the topic of 1925. It states, Good morning. Do you know that millions now living will never die? I mean, just what I say, that millions now living are never going to die. The finished mystery, the posthumous work of Pastor Russell, tells why there are millions now living who will never die. And if you can keep alive until 1925, you have excellent chances of being one of them. It is an absolute fact stated in every book of the Bible foretold by every prophet of the Bible. Now, following 1918, Rutherford and other brothers conducted a series of public lectures on the Millions message, which became the core focus of the preaching work. As shown in the accompanying clippings, these were mar marketed in local newspapers. Preaching that the earthly resurrection would commence in 1925 resulted in tremendous growth for the Watchtower Society. After 1925 passed without incident, the opposite occurred. The number of people attending the memorial plummeted by three quarters. Millions Now Living Will Never Die had its first failure in 1925 when the earthly return of Abraham failed to materialize. Now for the purposes of this episode, I'm not going to delve too much into the 1975 prediction and the generation doctrine. But many witnesses based crucial life choices on the understanding that Armageddon would arrive before the death of all those born prior to 1914. For many decades, it was plainly stated that Armageddon would come whilst people born prior to 1914 were still alive. In November 1968, a district overseer, Duggan, announced at the Pampa, Texas Assembly, that not really a full 83 months remains so let's be faithful and confident and we will be alive beyond the war of armageddon which therefore slated that armageddon was supposed to happen by october 1975 the commencement of jesus heavenly rulership in 1914 uh, as of course uh, outlined by the watchtower theology the foundation for many of these other teachings Unseen and hence unproven, witnesses expected proof in their own lifetime by means of the arrival of Armageddon based on that generation teaching that some people born prior to 1914 would never die. And here's conclusive proof out of their book called Survival into a New Earth that this was actually marketed. It states, The countdown that has proceeded for some six millenniums now nears its zero hour. So close is it that people who were alive in 1914 and who are now well along in years will not all pass off the scene before the thrilling events marketing or marking the vindication of Jehovah's sovereignty come to pass. Goes on to state, the early members of this group are now in their 60s or 70s or older. Jehovah did not allow the ingathering of this group to begin too soon. The great crowd including many of the earliest members thereof, will survive into the new earth. And the organization is notorious for laying the blame of their false predictions squarely on the rank and file, rather than saying that Jehovah's organization or the governing body incorrectly promoted a wrong teaching, they say people made the false assumption, shifting the blame from the leaders that promoted the teaching. A book I highly recommend is this book called Jehovah's Witnesses, Their Claims, Doctrinal Changes, and Prophetic Speculation. What Does the Record Show by Edmund C. Gross. I will post a link, an affiliate link, down below in the, in the, in the comment section, um, the description, 
So please, if you're interested in buying the book and add it to your collection, follow the link below. And the new understanding and teachings sometimes demands mental gymnastics to understand. But one thing is for certain. Many people have wasted their lives placing their hopes on a false doctrine that has robbed them of living their lives to the fullest. That's the show, folks. Don't forget to check out the merch store in the links below for all your all you cult classics. Until next time, bye for now.